Sounds of the 70s on Radio 2 and a great pleasure to welcome the bass player and vocalist and the original founding member of a great Scottish band called Nazareth, Pete Agnew is here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jay. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. It's great. I feel much better having seen you. <laughs> so the beginnings of Nazareth, I guess, really kind of started at um, secondary school, didn't it? You, Pre- you formed a band with some mates? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It was a band called the Shadets that, that, that eventually became Nazareth, you know, later on. It was uh, back in... So, 61, 62. The Shadets, is that because you were big fans of the Shadows? It was the guy who was the guitar player, it was that, that obvious, yeah, yeah, he was a big Shadows fan, so we were the Shadets. And did you do to, the dance steps? Oh, we did the whole, you, you, it didn't matter if you could play the guitar that well, as long as you could do the steps, you know, we yeah. had to be able to do all the, the moves. Yeah. Then there was that wonderful man, a bingo millionaire. What was his name? That's right, Bill Fahili. He was the guy that was our manager, you know, he was, uh, he was the guy that... Uh, Actually, talked to Cynthia Gwynn full time, if you like, uh, full time musicians in 70, 71. So he, he kind of funded you so you could give up work? Yeah, he did, aye. He basically said, you know, you guys have all got jobs, you've all got families, you know, how much are you making? And I'll give you a five or a week more than that. And we said, well, that's great, you know, which is better than we could have got our own work. We played uh, Broken Down Angel, the one I want to play now is amazing because you were developing a good kind of hard rock sound. Uh, and then you did a Joni Mitchell folk song. Yeah. It was a great song. I mean, it's just a wonderful song. We're a big fan of Joni's. We used to travel around, you know, all Europe in the van and everything. We never really listened to all that much heavy stuff. You know, we used to do Jackson Brown and Little Feet and Joni Mitchell and all that stuff. And that was a song we always loved. And uh, when we got around to the recording, we thought, well, must, what can we do with this and make it completely... You know, different. Make it ours. Make it sound as if we wrote it. You know, and I think that's what we what we did. I mean, well, you did. I mean, was it a group effort or was it one person or? Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, actually, it was a lot to do with Roger Glover, who was uh, the, the, the the producer of the album at the time. You know, when we when we decided to do this flight tonight, when we we, we got that sort of Ghost Riders in the Sky kind of uh, rhythm thing to it. You know. Uh, but it was, it was really good. And in fact, the, the day it was released in, in Britain, we met Joni in the, the, the studios, in a and studios in Los Angeles in Hollywood. And she was in recording with Ted Templeman, who was the guy who produced um, This Flight Tonight on her, her version of it, you know. And we said, hey, we've got a new record out. And we'll, we'll let you hear it. We went into the studio. And she was blown away. She couldn't, really? be- she couldn't believe it. And uh, she just she couldn't believe that a, a rock band had done it, you know. And when she came to do her tour, I always remember that. She opened up in the, the Queen Elizabeth Hall in London. And uh, she opened the set. She said, "I'd like to do a Nazareth tune." <laughs> <laughs> so that was nice. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. Um, am I right in remembering that I was in New York, and I was in this club, and I'm I think you can remember it. Yeah, <laughs> I've got vague recollections. So I was having a couple of drinks with Phil Liner, which is hard to have a couple, and you guys were all in there. And I remember you saying, come on, Johnny, the night is young. This is about half past two in the morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you said, and I had a drink on at the time. I thought, I don't know what I was drinking back then, Jack Daniels and Coke probably. And they said, bring your drink. So out we filed at this club and into your Cadillac limo. That's right. Mm-hmm. And those I'm, were the days. Those <laughs> were the days. <laughs> So I'm not making this up. This did happen, did it? <laughs> no, it wasn't a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it did happen. I remember that. Yeah, I remember it very well. And we did, I think we, I think we got back in time for breakfast to the hotel. Yeah, no, I think so. <laughs> and I remember that uh, I, I was, the radio was on in this, in this limo and the driver said, just hit that button at the back. There was this big black button. That's right. And it just changed channels. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. It was like, you know, half three in the morning in New York and there were all these stations... Just blaring out great amazing. music. Uh, amazing, yeah. uh, it was amazing. It's a different, it was a different world. Uh, yeah. Now, going back to what we were talking about in the first hour, that night in New York uh, that went on till breakfast, because I think you've, th- this was a time of your really big one in America that you were yeah, celebrating. Yeah, it was happening for us there. No. This was like a huge hit in about twenty countries around the world. Number one in about six countries. And again, because you did hard rock shows live, but some of your records were completely different. Yeah. Uh, we've had this flight tonight, the Joni Mitchell song. So then you pick an Every Brothers classic. Whose idea was that? A friend of ours, Jerry Gilbert, was getting married in Scotland. And we were recording in England. And we went up to the wedding. And when we came back, Manny and Daryl had put down a backing track of Love Hurts. But they'd never consulted us about the key because they weren't singers. 
and it was in the same key as the record, which meant Dan had to sing it at that excruciating you know, level, that height. And uh, we, we really thought, oh, we, we, we can't do this, you know. But anyway, he persevered and he did that. And that's what made the thing so utterly unusual. It was a bit of a mistake, really, you know. And it was never recorded as a single. It was recorded as a B-side. You know, you know, in those days, people used to take tracks off the album. You didn't want to take two tracks off your album, you know, So you, you to put as a single. So you always recorded some extra stuff. And that was just put in as extra stuff until somebody actually said, hey, you know, this could be a hit. So the tours you used to do in America in the 70s, um, you played with Slade and Thin Lizzy. Were they all on the same bill? Yeah, we did. It was funny because at the time when we were in the charts over there, we had a, a, a whole section of the tour where it was Nazareth was the headline act and Thin Lizzy were in, you know, they had been supporting us on the whole tour. And Slade were added to the bill, so they were opening. So it was Nazareth, Thin Lizzy and Slade opening. And it was so weird because if you'd have come back to Britain, you know, you would have took that bill and turned it upside down because it would have been Slade and then Thin Lizzy and then Nazareth opening, you know. But it's just that, well, the different places you are in the world, it just depends how the bands are, what, what division they're in, you know. Uh, it was a major, it was a good laugh, that tour, because, you know, you can imagine. Oh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a bit... Uh, it was a bit daft, you know, <laughs> but it was good fun. Yeah, I like that. One way to describe it. <laughs> you can't really be daft anymore, can you? Well, it's more like a cup of tea after a gig now. Very so. much so, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pete, thanks for coming by. Great to see you. Oh, it's a pleasure, John. Really. And, and, and it's wonderful Nazareth is still going. We wish you well on your tour. Thanks very much.